Um, and I can't find out what the consequences were. Uh, I don't, you know, I, this was sort of a new thing I decided for tonight. I wanted to find out a little more about this man because I don't think we have any other buildings designed by him in the community. And so I just did a little bit of research. Um, he writes a rebuttal that appears in the Chicago Tribune on June 2nd, 1877. Uh, about a year later, of course, he develops the plans for the Kalamazoo Ladies Library Association uh, at a charge of $75. And I did, again, a little research and plugged it into one of those nifty interactive uh, consumer price indexes and found that would be probably equivalent to about $1,600 today. Uh, and obviously we know that the Kalamazoo Ladies Library Association building was very successful. Um, eventually they did build the Winnebago County Courthouse and apparently they made some modifications and supports and I don't think it's, I can, in fact I know it's not used as the present courthouse today but I don't know if it is still standing but I found a couple of online images but apparently what happened was at a point um, during the construction phase the dome just literally came crashing down and that's that's where the uh, industrial accident happened. Uh, he did go on to other things after the Ladies Library Association. And I have never been to San Diego, but now I want to go to San Diego and I want to go to Petco Stadium. Because one of his better known buildings uh, in San Diego, and he, we know he designed at least one theater, um, he designed the Western Metal Supply Company which has been incorporated into the uh, Padres Ballpark uh, Petco Stadium in San Diego. And um, he spent the last 15 years of his life in San Diego. Uh, he was involved in a competition in Rome um, in the 1880s to complete a monument to King Victor Emmanuel. Uh, he came in second in this competition that drew 293 competitors. He won a medal. Um, he designed several houses in the Lake Geneva, Wisconsin area. And then he was later involved in um, an organization of the Western Association of Architects at Chicago. And this body later merged into the American Institute of Architects. And he was in San Diego between 1906 and 1921. So um, even though that there was that terrible tragedy with the courthouse, uh, we know that things worked out well for him in the end. Uh, and I think it's kind of interesting that when the building is constructed, uh, the Ladies Library Association sends an announcement to the Chicago Tribune announcing that the Ladies Library Association building has been constructed, it's open. Uh, they go into the details of how much it costs. They mention that you know, Mr. H.L. Gay, the architect of Chicago, has designed it. And, of course, there were any number of announcements in uh, the two papers here in Kalamazoo. We had two papers at that time, the Telegraph and the Gazette. But uh, it does get this mention in the Chicago Tribune, and I'm assuming it probably gets mentioned in other state papers as well. Um, the cost was $8,000, and uh, again, I just did a calculation, and I found that that would be about $176,000 today if we were to take $8,000 in 1879. Um, this article, and this article goes on for several more paragraphs, but uh, I wanted you to see it. Uh, it talks about the design as being Renaissance. Uh, I have also seen it referred to as Victorian Gothic, Venetian Gothic. Um, but taking the building itself, you know, the Features, I think, that are interesting to look at uh, and that maybe add to this uh, you know, questioning of, you know, what style is it? Because I certainly, you know, I see elements of Queen Anne. I see elements, you know, maybe even of the Italianate style. Uh, notice the irregularly pitched roof, the prominent front-facing gable, the irregular windows, the asymmetrical facade. Um, and all of these would have been indicative of the Queen Anne architectural style, which was reaching its zenith of popularity uh, during the last quarter of the 19th century. The single-story small entry portico and arched windows, however, to me, suggest the Italianate style. And this was an architectural style for several decades in the 19th century. Um, this is from the 1880. Kalamazoo County history. 
um, and we see that the plans from Gay, including the finishing details for the structure, are incorporated. We see the decorative flashing ridges on the roof line, the glazed tiles under the eaves, the two large patterned masonry chimneys, and the tiny dormers. Um, it is, it's just a spectacular building. Uh, there's no two ways about it. You go in the building into the vestibule. And this was, to me, one of the most interesting aspects of researching the construction of this building. This vestibule took as much discussion as, and, and more than other points of the building. There were some areas where the committee seemed to be very much in agreement, uh, but they went back and forth. And should we have something, uh, it was the floor covering in particular. And um, should the floor be, you know, wood or should it be tiled? And um, just going round and round about how important this was, this really set the stage that you came in the building and, you know, this is the first thing that you encountered. And in the end, they did go with the tile. They went with the, the more expensive option and what they thought, I think, was the more durable, but also, you know, suggested the permanency of the organization. This is a part of the building that exists but doesn't exist in this manner anymore. Uh, on the main level, there was a museum, a parlor, a library, and an indoor water source. And in fact, you could go right into the museum. And this is the museum, which if you look at that photograph, um, you will notice uh, a curio case. And again, looking at the um, minutes of the organization, when members would travel, they would pick up um, you know, geological specimens uh, and bring them back. And I am under the impression that they really wanted members of the public to come in and see some of the treasures that they had gathered from travels and um, excursions. And several of the members at this point in time, um, you know, Lucinda Hinsdale Stone was a world traveler. Uh, she led study groups uh, abroad. Uh, other members traveled and frequently, you know, they would bring back uh, not only things for the museum, but they would bring back, you know, objects of art, which, uh, you know, the objects of art, uh, I'm not an art historian, but, uh, you know, those are a whole other just wonderful, wonderful treasure in this building. Of course, the library was a prominent place. And again, if you go in the building today, you know, much of the library uh, has the same appearance that it does today. However, there's one thing that um, I want to point out that I've always thought is important. Uh, in the lower right-hand corner, that is clearly a circulation desk. Um, you know, these women were circulating books. And um, again, um, one of the discoveries I made working with the records, um, there are books that are marked with, they're called membership records. And um, I remember the day that I was looking at the membership records, and I'd been looking at these because I'd been analyzing the members and who they were and how they might be related to one another. But they had these numbers next to them. And at a point, I just realized, I just had this bell go off in my head that these numbers represented the books listed in the catalog. And therefore, we had all of the information about the early reading habits of Kalamazoo citizens, primarily women, but there were men who belonged to this organization. And uh, I didn't get into that at all in my research. That's a whole other research topic. But you could see how long somebody had book number 363 out, and then maybe see where somebody else had that same book out later. And uh, when I talk about a, a catalog, I mean, we're talking about the period of time where the organization actually published a catalog, gave every number a book, and you know we don't have a card catalog, we don't have an online you know, catalog. It's a little booklet that um, would be made available and I think was actually sold at a nominal cost. So if people wanted to know what the Ladies Library Association had, it listed all of the uh, information. Of course, the other thing I'll point out in this um, library, um, the various objects of art, the bust, um, the paintings, 